They say love makes the world go round, but be honest folks, money is doing the heavy lifting. So buckle up, Buttercup, because today we're diving headfirst into the wacky world of wealth with six money facts that'll leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. Welcome to Wealth Dose, the only channel dedicated to making you feel richer by association. Number one. Okay, let's talk about big spenders. No, not your friend who insists on ordering appetizers for the table. We're talking about the US government and its penchant for printing money like it's going out of style. The largest bill ever printed by the US Treasury was a whopping $100,000 note. This behemoth of a bill featured the distinguished visage of President Woodrow Wilson, looking as stoic as ever. These bills weren't exactly for everyday use. They were primarily used for transactions between Federal Reserve banks and weren't circulated to the public. So unless your great aunt Mildred was secretly running a shadow banking empire, chances are you won't find one in your dusty old monopoly box. But still, the $100,000 bill serves as a tantalizing reminder of a time when money seemed to flow like water, at least for the government. It also makes you wonder, what exactly were they buying that required such enormous denominations? Number 2. The most expensive coin, worth more than your weight in gold, probably. Now, we've all done some questionable things for a little cash, but would you part with, say, $10 million for a coin? Well, that's precisely what one wealthy collector did in 2021 for a 1933 Double Eagle gold coin. This wasn't just any old pocket change, though. The 1933 Double Eagle has a more dramatic backstory than your average soap opera. It was minted during the Great Depression, when the U.S. was facing a financial crisis of epic proportions. President Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to recall and melt down most of these coins, making them exceedingly rare. Only a handful of millions minted are known to have survived, turning them into the holy grail for coin collectors. This particular coin had quite the journey too. It escaped the government's clutches, ended up in the possession of Egypt's King Farouk, and vanished again after the Egyptian Revolution in 1952. Talk about a piece of history, or more accurately, a piece of history worth. Number three. Okay, folks, buckle up for a cautionary tale about the dangers of hyperinflation, starring none other than Zimbabwe and its infamous trillion dollar bills. Now, you might think a trillion dollars would buy you, well, everything. But in Zimbabwe, during the late 2000s, it wouldn't even buy you a loaf of bread. We're talking about a time when prices doubled every 24 hours, and people used stacks of cash thicker than phone books just to buy groceries. How did this happen, you ask? It's a complex story involving government mismanagement, corruption, and a healthy dose of economic voodoo. The short version is that Zimbabwe's government decided to print money like it was going out of style leading to a spectacular collapse of their currency. People were using money as wallpaper because it was cheaper than buying it. Now you might find that amusing, and I'll admit, there's a certain dark humor to it. But for the people of Zimbabwe, it was a nightmare. Zimbabwe's hyperinflation is a stark reminder that money is only as good as the trust people have in it. Number four, let's rewind the clock to the 17th century, when Amsterdam was the epicenter of global trade and the scent of tulips filled the air. In this bustling Dutch city, it was here that the world's first official stock market was born. Now, before we had Wall Street bros yelling into phones and frantically clicking their mouses, we had the Dutch East India Company, a behemoth of a trading company that would make Amazon blush. They needed a way to raise capital for their risky voyages to the East Indies. So they started issuing shares of their company, which investors could buy and sell. Thus, the Amsterdam Stock Exchange, the granddaddy of all stock markets, was born. But it wasn't all smooth sailing in the world of early capitalism. Oh no, my friends, things got downright tulipy. Around the same time, the Netherlands was gripped by a speculative frenzy known as tulip mania. People were buying and selling tulip bulbs like they were going out of style, driving prices to astronomical levels. As with all bubbles, the tulip bubble eventually burst leaving a trail of financial ruin and shattered dreams. Number five. All right, let's dive into the murky world of money laundering, a phrase that sounds like it belongs in a Scorsese movie. While hiding illegal funds is about as old as money itself, the term money laundering has surprisingly recent and surprisingly literal origins. 
Back in the 1920s, prohibition was in full swing in the United States, and organized crime was, shall we say, thriving. One of the most notorious gangsters of the era was Al Capone, a man who knew a thing or two about making money illegally. But even gangsters need to clean their dirty cash, right? That's where laundromats came in. Capone and his cronies bought up several laundromats, which allowed them to mix their ill-gotten gains from bootlegging and other criminal enterprises with the legitimate income from the laundromats. Because, hey, who will question a sudden surge in quarters and dryer sheets, right? It was the perfect cover. And so, the term money laundering was born, a testament to criminals' creative ingenuity and shameless audacity. Number six. Finally, let's discuss everyone's favorite way to spend money they don't have, credit cards. Those little plastic rectangles that grant us instant purchasing power and the potential for crippling debt, what's not to love? The first credit card, as we know it, wasn't some sleek piece of metal, but rather a diner plate. That's right, folks. In the 1920s, certain gas stations and department stores started issuing metal plates to their regular customers, allowing them to charge purchases to their accounts. It was a novel concept at the time, a far cry from today's ubiquitous plastic cards. Then, in 1950, Frank McNamara had a dining epiphany that would change the world. After finishing a business dinner, McNamara realized he'd left his wallet at home. The humiliation, the shame, the inspiration for a revolutionary financial product. That embarrassing experience led McNamara to create the Diners Club card, the first widely adopted credit card. And thus, the era of plastic was born. So there you have it, folks. Six mind-blowing money facts that prove truth is often stranger and more entertaining than fiction. We've journeyed through the annals of financial history and uncovered some truly bizarre and fascinating tales. If you enjoyed this wild ride through the world of wealth, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Wealth Dose for more fascinating financial adventures, and ring that notification bell because, apparently, that's a thing now. Until next time, remember, money may not buy happiness, but it can buy you a 1933 double